Hi, I'm Dr. Holly Hubbard, and I'm an essential worker. I work for a cargo shipment. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a glazer. Um, we put in glass and storefront on high-rise buildings and residential. I'm just happy to uh, help <laughs> any way I can by doing my job. Essential workers all over the world have been putting themselves on the front lines daily during the COVID-19 pandemic. Today we will focus on how the contagion affects women, children, and other essential workers in Atlanta, Georgia. For MSL Media, it's Maisha Simone. You're here shopping, you have your mask on, you're, we're at Kroger. Um, how has COVID-19 affected you and her in this time? Um, because of all the jobs closing, it affected me when it comes to having to provide for her, having to pay for my bills and my rent to keep a roof over her head, because I don't want my child living out on the street and they're still charging us. So I need to try to find a way to make money. And I'm glad that these stores are still open because it would be crazy if they closed, because how would I feed her as well? Exactly. So it affected a lot. <laughs> uh, me personally, uh, I've been working since the beginning of it without a without a, a leave pretty much okay. so I've been out here on the front line but I haven't been, haven't been paid for being on the front line Wow! Now, getting, maybe we getting regular straight pay but so you get regular straight pay and you're expected a bonus but you haven't received that bonus correct to be honest I, I don't have a job no more to be honest yeah like okay, um, yeah uh, they completely stopped and I've been waiting on my um, yeah, the unemployment. I got the stimulus check, so that helped. I've been able to pay my rent with that. But um, I, until my job opens back up, I'm kind of stuck, really, either asking people for help or how people do the homemade masks now. I've started doing that. And then my mom, she has um, lung cancer. Oh, so, so sorry to hear that. So I'm not able, during this time, I'm not able to see her because... Even though I have decreased my risk, I still am at a higher risk, and she's at a higher risk to get really severely right, ill with right. this illness. So, um, and my dad also has myasthenia gravis. So, we, you know, I just said, "Hey, I won't come see you," which is sad because right. I love my parents, and you know, this is the time where I want to be more around them right. because they are ill. Um, but I'm like, no, right? You know, you need to make sure you take care of yourself. How has COVID nineteen affected the business? Actually, we have been affected mainly by the absence of staff because staff have not wanted to come out because of fear, I guess, of catching the, the virus. Even though we offer PPEs, um, they still haven't come out. Hygienists in Atlanta don't work. So that's a big part of your resource that, that comes in. And um, patients, actually only come in for emergencies so our income has been drastically reduced but we've always stayed open to offer our services for emergencies also patients are scared because they're like right. oh this is the office where people go to you know to get to, checked to and, get checked if mm -hmm, they're sick and mm -hmm. they don't know that they have covid until they come right so they don't want to go to the office just for a regular checkup right. they don't want to risk themselves when they are well right which i understand so we had to kind of change um mm -hmm. the way we do medicine so that we can make our patients feel comfortable coming for their well care because um, that is a that is a, the most important thing in pediatrics. Do you see it in children or is it? I mean I think kids have been exposed. I, um, the tests that I have run for kids that have been, have been um, suspected have all come back negative. Okay. But um, I have had some kids who have parents who had COVID-19 and they, then they get sick. Um, ties and offerings. You know during the pandemic a lot of people are filing for unemployment and aren't able to have access to funds. Has that changed how they tithe here? No, it's during the hard times. Okay. The church has a tendency to prosper more. Okay. So if anything, uh, they're, they're sending their tithes in, they're, they're going to, uh, on the internet they give. So we are comparable to what we normally are. Traveling during the pandemic has been a bit more difficult with all of the new travel restrictions. However, people of business, influencers, and others still maneuver through airports with plans of making ends meet. We stop by Hartsville Jackson Atlanta International Airport and surprisingly see empty baggage claims and check-in counters that appear inactive. Do you feel safe traveling during this time with everything that's going on? Yes, yeah, I do. do. Yeah, because um, 
I'm really a private person, so okay. you know I'm not really affected by it at all. I'm not too comfortable traveling. It's just I had a business proposition, so I had to make things happen. Half of the world is in quarantine, and the other half are kind of like going to social gatherings and big parties. What is your take on that? Um, I don't think everyone ought to be in large gatherings, okay. but small gatherings, maybe 10 or less. I feel that's fine. Us as millennials, especially black millennials, we need to be the ones to take advantage of yes. what's going on right now. Instead of, oh, we in the club, we twerking, Atlanta's open, let's turn yes. up. Yes. No, we need to be the ones that's getting in the house and, and grinding mm -hmm. and creating those businesses and taking advantage of what's going on all around us. The internet, yes. cameras, <laughs> media. These, these are the things that we need to be doing instead of twerking in the club. <laughs> Actually made me richer, y'all. <laughs> This quarantine has made me richer and I'm grateful for it. Like, um, when it's over, I'll be excited to like fully get back to business, but like it's helped me a lot. I think at this point there still should be quarantining going on because people are still getting sick and dying every day. You don't know who has it or where it's coming from. In Georgia, I still think uh, the governor took us back in too fast Okay. because uh, the numbers are still up. Okay. So until it starts trending downward, I think we're making mistakes. But I did see over the weekend hundreds of people in close proximity to each other. Yes. And that kind of get me upset because I want them to do what it takes to get the numbers down. They need to take precautions, not just to protect themselves, but also to protect people they, they come in contact with who are high risk. You don't know when it is going to be you or your family that gets affected. Do you think that things will go back to normal? And if this is the new normal, how do you think the world would adjust to it? Um, I do think that things will go back to normal because people have that urgency that they want to get back out. Right. So I do things, I do feel like people will go back to normal. However, I do feel like they'll take safety a little bit more seriously. Uh, I believe things will go back to normal, but it'll be a new normal where you have young millennials that are doing the things that they supposed to be, that, that we should have been doing. Right. We should have been taking care of ourselves. We should have been starting our own businesses. We should have been doing things for ourselves instead of going out and building companies, building these big corporations for these other people's building other people's dreams when you should be building dreams for yourself um, i do believe it is a new normal and um i don't think people are just like adjust to it i think they like do like whatever they want to do it's about to get crazy <laughs> i really think that cash is gonna stop like yeah. like paper money, paper money i think that's gonna go that's the thing if no one knows what's going on i think it's gonna take a long time i think it's gonna probably take the rest of this year i really do think that i'm a cyber security analyst i'm gonna be working from home for the next four months so me personally and my journey with my career start my career is making me realize how important the internet is this is the year this is the the decade of the internet yes. we're talking on the camera right now yes. this will be on the internet <laughs> yes. so me i'm realizing that the the cyber security internet it is the future people need you know their shipments their packages and things like that and so it's really important that we're out here doing all that we can for you know everyone here i think everybody should move at their own pace still follow cdc guidelines and also use common sense and whatever you're doing Change is always, you know, hard for people, but I feel like if we just put our best foot forward, we'll be able to accomplish and be able to move forward with this. And my part is, and, and we don't make, want to make it political, Yes. but if our president had responded when he first got the news, uh, there literally 40,000, 50,000 people would still be alive.